Hi, this is Kristen L, or just Kristen, and welcome to my channel where I talk about science fiction and fantasy books, usually through the lens of current awards. So I've been focusing on reading lots of novellas that are eligible for awards this year, just so that I can be, you know, informed of what's out there and have educated opinions about what is actually getting nominated. And it's been a lot of fun. I focused especially in March on reading a lot, a lot of novellas, and here is my ranking. I ended up reading, or at least partially reading, 22 novellas. So here's my ranking. I am not going to like do, you know, here's my number one, my number two. I'm going to kind of lump them together into some broader categories. And I'm actually going to do it a little backwards because usually I feel like when you watch a rank video or a read a listicle or whatever, we start with the least favorite, but I'm actually going to start with my favorite and then kind of go from there. And remember, these are my personal <laughs> ranking. So my very, very favorite novellas that were written or published in 2020 that are eligible for awards this year, probably my number one favorite that I've read is The Seat by Chana Porter. This book was just, it really, it just struck me perfectly. It was creative, it was interesting, it was absurd. Um, it was about aliens. It was about humans. It was just utterly delightful. My top choice out of all the novellas. I would love to see this one win. I'm really sad that it didn't get nominated for Nebula Award. It definitely deserves it. It's just, it's great. Uh, also in my favorites category is Prosper's Demon by I think it's A.J. Parker. I just finished this one a few days ago and it was it was just so entertaining. It was a really quick read. It was fun. It was interesting. It was quirky. It had some surprises. Um, I would love to see this one also nominated. Once again, also didn't make the Nebula nomination list, but you know, maybe we'll see it on Luca, Locus or Hugo. I don't know. Maybe I just have really unique tastes. Um, and then the other favorite that I have in this category is The AI Who Loved Me by Alyssa Cole. I talked a lot about this in other videos. I read it a few months ago. It was kind of a mashup of a rom-com and sci-fi and it was just loads of fun, just really lighthearted, but at the same time, a, a real like futuristic sci-fi kind of world with a lot of sci-fi elements. And it was just a blast. I thoroughly enjoyed my time reading it. So these three, I really thoroughly enjoyed my time reading them. I felt like they were crafted well, and I think that they deserve to be on nomination lists. My next category is my good category. So in my good category, I have books that I really enjoyed. I would definitely be happy to see them on nomination lists, but they weren't my favorites, and maybe there was just one or two things that didn't quite work for me, but on the whole, I still loved them. So these are generally the like four star reads, the three and a half to four and a half star reads for me. So the first one I have on this list is Firewalkers by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This was actually quite a lot of fun. I loved the setting. I loved so many things about it. And I think the only thing that kept it from being a favorite for me was just the pacing felt a little bit sloggy at times. The prose didn't flow for me as well as maybe some of my other favorites. It just, it felt a little dry at times, but at the same time, like on the whole, it was excellent. So I would really actually love to see this one on nomination list. I would nominate it. It's just not quite good enough to be one of my favorites. Next, I have The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in Water. Once again, this was a great story. I loved the characters, I love the setting, and oh my god, the cover is gorgeous. It's one of my favorite covers that I've seen this year. Um, it just, it fell just a tiny bit flat. Like, it was fine, it was good. It just wasn't good enough to be a favorite. Of Dragons, Feast, and Murders by Elliot de Bodarn. This was quite fun. Um, it just, it had so many great things going for it. The world was fascinating. I want to know more about the characters. I just, I thought it was excellent. It was a complete plot all into itself. It just, I think I would have enjoyed it more if I had read the series that it's part of. 
Um, so it's just, you know, it's just a little bit not quite good enough in my taste to be in my favorite section. And then I have the Stone Wet Tie, which I haven't gotten to talk about a whole ton. I'll be talking about that in my video, which I think I'm going to be making tomorrow for my weekly wrap up. I am almost done with it. I actually haven't quite finished it and it is excellent. When I first started this, I was blown away by the prose and the writing. It draws you in. It's really well written. It's beautiful. The story of it, the writing, it's all great. But what's falling flat for me is that there's not a lot of plot and it's starting to feel very slow paced and it's starting to feel repetitive. So for me, that makes it just, it kind of doesn't quite get to my favorite ranking. It's just good and I would be happy to see it get nominated, but it's not working fantastically for me. It's just okay. And then finally, in my good category, I have The Tower of Mud and Straw by Yaroslav Barsikov. And I literally just finished this like 20 minutes ago. I listened to it on the Metaphoricist podcast, um, which I will link below so that you all can, it's free. You can listen to it. I think you can also read it print. And this was, it was really good. It was an interesting story, an interesting kind of setup, interesting kind of things. Um, just, it was kind of confusing to follow at times and there was maybe too much going on and there were some things that I wish had been developed a little bit more, explained a little bit more, but on the whole it was excellent, just not quite in my favorites category. Now this one was nominated for Nebula and I, I don't begrudge it that at all. I, I'm happy to see it there. But um, I am a little sad that so far, none of the other books I've mentioned have made it. So I'm really, really hoping that um, I'll see it on Locus or, Locus or Hugo Award nomination list. Okay, so that's my favorites and my good category. Next is the, you know, it was fine, but it's not necessarily my cup of tea. So I was really, as I was making this list, trying to balance like, my enjoyment of the novella versus is it well crafted? Is it just good art? Because sometimes those things can be separate. Sometimes a book can be really well written, but still not be my cup of tea. Um, and I think it's really funny, actually, I, I follow that so po who I will link below. And we've read a lot of the same novellas. And it's really funny what works for me doesn't necessarily work for her and vice versa. I noticed that um, she started the seat but ended up DNFing because it just wasn't for her, whereas it's my, my favorite. And then there's a couple books in this category that she absolutely loved that for me just kind of didn't work all that great. So definitely if you want to kind of balance my opinions with a different opinion, go watch some of the videos on her channel where she talks about these. Um, so in this category, the first one I have is Take a Look at the 5 and 10 by Connie Willis. Now I actually did like this one. I just I don't know, I just didn't think it was that great. Like, I didn't want to put it in the same category as my favorites or even the ones that I thought were good. Um, just because, I don't know, it was just, it was a Christmas story. It just, it was only, it was just fine. I don't know. I don't. Um, then I have The Empress of Salt and Fortune and When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain. And these are both um, installments in the Singing Hill Cycle by Nevo. And this is an example of good art that just isn't my cup of tea. Um, they're beautifully written. And I, you know, honestly wouldn't be sad to see them on nomination lists, but I personally didn't enjoy them that much. They didn't really work that well for me. I wanted to go just a little bit deeper with the world and the characters, and I don't know. I, I guess I'm just not the audience for it, but I definitely recommend it. Um, and then finally in this category, I have Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. I've also heard a lot of, you know, wild praise for this book, and I thought that it was well written. But once again, just not my cup of tea. I didn't really connect to it. I didn't really love all the tropes. And I don't, I don't, I don't even know exactly why it didn't work for me. I just didn't find it that interesting. So then I have my meh category where it was like, mm, it was okay, but not great. And this is really where enjoyment and craft are kind of both on the mm. So the first one I have is Stone and Steel by Ebony Dunbar. I did enjoy a lot of things about this. It had a lot of really great things going for it, but it just felt really underdeveloped and not terribly well written. So I just feel like this is one of the lower ranked books in my novella list this year. Then I have Thinna by Nino Cipri, or Cipri, I don't know how you say it. Please tell me if you know. 
Um, this one actually got nominated for Nebula, which surprised me. It is, it has good things going for it. It is a really interesting setting and idea, and I like the idea for the characters, maybe more than the execution of the characters. I felt like at the end of the story, I just didn't care a lot about the characters. I feel like I needed more somehow. The pacing felt really slow to me. I kind of had to push myself to get through the end of this. It started off great. I loved it in the beginning and then it just got old. I I don't know. It just something wasn't working about it for me and I just think that it it's not nearly as good as a lot of the other novellas that I read this year. And finally in the Met category is Upright Woman Wanted by Sarah Gailey. Once again, this had some really good moments. But on the whole, it just kind of boring. It was kind of ambivalent in terms of, you know, there are nine binary people and lesbian people and they should be allowed to exist and live their lives. And the setting was kind of like this futuristic Western world where they're not allowed to have lives. And so I don't know, it just felt kind of heavy handed and it's, you know, messaging. Um, even though I'm totally for that message, that's great. It just was not subtle at all um and then just i don't know just also just that i'm not really into westerns it's not my aesthetic whatsoever so i don't know next category is my dnfs so these are novellas that i started and all of these they're not necessarily bad they're just i started them and i couldn't get myself to finish them because they just weren't interesting to me so the first on here is no man's land by aj fitzwater and this, I really might finish it. It's still on my Kindle. I still like kind of pick at it a little bit here and there. It's just not super calling to me. It's a little bit slow. So I said in another video, it started out very strong. It started out setting up this character and her situation, and it was actually pretty enthralling. And then she gets to this point in the book where she starts to realize that she has the power to turn into an animal. And for some reason, what should have been the most interesting, fascinating part of the story ended up being the part that just suddenly completely lost my interest. It suddenly became boring and disjointed and I didn't even understand what was going on. I think it was trying too hard to be poetic and artsy and it just stopped working. I don't know. I may still go back and finish it. It's certainly not terrible. I just, it's on my DNF list for now. Next, I have Burning Roses. This had a very, very weak start. It did not capture my interest at all. I did push through a little bit. It got a little more interesting. Um, I may still like try to pick at it and get through it. I don't know, but for now it's a DNF and I'm not terribly interested in picking it back up again. Then we have Riot Baby. I feel really bad about this one. This one has been nominated for Goodreads Choice Science Fiction category and it, it also has a Nebula nomination. And I've heard a lot of people say, you know, it's so good, and I'm just not connecting to it. It feels really abstract and disjointed, and I'm having a hard time following it or finding reasons to be interested in the story or the characters. Um, it's probably, you know, artistic somehow, and I'm just not appreciating it. I don't know, but it's on my DNF list. Then we have Moon Tangled. Now, this is... Uh, kind of a 1.5 or 2.5 installment in an existing novel series and I think that this was written about some characters that fans really just wanted to have some more story told about that maybe they didn't get enough airtime in the in the main series so there's this novella and I have not read the series so I think if I had read the series and was into it I would probably appreciate this one more it's supposed to be a standalone the world is just not very interesting to me though and I wasn't really connecting with the characters so this is a DNF for me. It doesn't mean that it's bad, it might actually be really good and I'm just not the right person to read it or maybe I need to read the series first, I don't know. Then we have The Four Profound Weaves. This one just, I wasn't connecting with it at all, it's just not a style that I was enjoying. It's a little abstract, it's a little slow paced, It's um, it just came across kind of like super anxious, like the, the narrator is a very anxious person, and I don't know, it just wasn't working for me, so that was a DNF. This did get nominated for the Nebula Award, though, so I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if it's like actually a good book I don't appreciate, or if it's just really not that great, and I, I don't know. 
And then finally in this category, I have Fly Away. Now I barely started this. It's not really fair for me to even put this on here. It just wasn't interesting to me. It's by no means bad. It might be really, really good. It's just not a book that appeals to me. So I didn't bother to push myself through any more of it. And then I have one book in my category that is just problematic, and that's Sea Change by Nancy Cross. It's a good book, but it has really problematic content, and I don't want to see it and get any more attention. So I'm going to leave it at that. So those are all of the novellas that I have at least started this year that are eligible for awards and my basic ranking of them. If you are interested in any of these in particular, I have been thinking about doing some more standalone reviews of individual books. So let me know if you would like to see an individual review of any of these books and I will think about maybe making one. Um, a lot of these I have talked about in my weekly journals or monthly wrap ups. So if you're curious, you can see what I have to say about them there. And then I did want to just kind of mention some books that I did not get to that I have heard are good and probably worth reading if you are interested in following award nominations. And that's Seven of Infinities by Elliot de Bedard. It sounds really interesting. I just haven't been able to get my hands on it. Um, and then finally, The Tale of Ima de Yun Nuagban by, I can't write it down. I'll have it on the screen though, or in the description at least. Um, this did get a, no a Nebula nomination, and I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet. It sounds really good, though, so definitely check it out. Um, all right, that's it. If you have read any of these, please let me know in the comments. Um, tell me if you agree or disagree with my rankings, um, just generally what your thoughts are. These are definitely my opinions. Again, please let me know if you'd like to see individual reviews of any of these books. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.